and then it was get all the kits sorted out. So it was more or less, this is getting a bit serious now, so we stopped playing because up until Ascension, we never believed we'd really go in. And uh, when they said, you know, hang around for two weeks at Ascension, we were really pissed off then because two weeks wasted, they were fortifying the place and everything. So, you know, when they said go, that was it. Press button and stand back. Well, when you're on a boat and it's getting, there's all sorts coming in there trying to get it and you're sat on it doing absolutely nothing, trying to wait your turn to get off. It's hard to wait your turn. You want to get off because you feel a bit safer on the land. I couldn't have been a Matlo and sat on a boat. No way. And to harass them wherever possible. These missions didn't always go according to plan. We got within 50 metres of the base of it and one of the, the blokes in the front said, stop by hand signal so we all stopped we all went to ground and it came back there's a sentry up front and we're all peering through the gloom of the dark like and uh there were six of these blokes you could just see them they were all talking and mincing up and down carrying weapons one of them then lit a cigarette up and they were they were talking away so we decided we'd try and push around this bend and get into some cover because we were well out in the open at the moment and they'd not seen us me and a bloke called graham fisk just snaked over the top of this little hole on our stomachs and crawled uh, along some jagged type rocks. So between me and him, there's a little row of rocks that look like the back of a dinosaur. And we're just crawling along, trying to get towards these six who were shooting at us, because we were behind them now. And this little voice in the dark said, Steve, I can see one. And I hadn't realized at the time that when we'd gone over the top, he'd pulled a 66 out and made it ready. So, I mean, my immediate reaction was, well, we're hitting, you know. So the next thing I know is a 66 goes off and nearly blows my head off, you know, because he's fired at this bloke with a 66. And it hit him, went through him and detonated behind this rock and totally blew him to pieces. And if you've ever <laughs> imagined in the middle of a gunfight, I mean, I was so annoyed that he'd fired this 66, I actually gave him a bollock in, in the, you know, in the middle of a firefight. And um, then this other, <laughs> these others must have thought, well, he's... You know, he's gone, we'll try and snake out. And what they did was they came round the same way and instead of getting back up on the Harriet, they walked straight into me and him. So, I mean, it was like a duck shoot. So six of them went down. The information about the Argentinian positions from such patrols was passed on to the rest of the men who were about to go into battle. The idea of going back to Mount Harriet did not enthrall Steve Newland. And then they said, you're going to hit this again. And, I mean, you just... There's nothing you can say. You're just stunned. You know, I mean, and then, then you're trying to explain, but we've been there, we've done this already, you know, but they weren't having it. We were going to do it again. Probably we didn't do it right the first time. We'd been briefed already that to stop meant we'd lost, so you, you couldn't afford to stop. So Sharky came up on the net and said, um, he was talking to the boss, and he said, look, we're, we're pinned down by a sniper, and apparently, you know, I mean, that was what he thought it was. Now, I'd worked out in relation to where he was, to where I was, that this bloke should have been somewhere up above me. So, being, you know, putting one on one makes five, uh, I'd worked out that we'd go and get him. So while I'm trying to brief my section as to what we're going to do, there was an incoming stomp. So naturally, they all took cover. And in the dark, I never realized that they'd all took cover. And my two IC Shep were supposed to be coming with me. So, um, I said, okay, Shep, we'll go, not realizing that he was on the deck, you know, covering his head, because I, well, I was surrounded by these massive rocks by this stage. So I just started off on my own in the dark, um, climbed up this smally cliff, went over the top of it, ran some more boulders, snaked about a bit, and went up to link up with L Company, who were on our left then. So I linked up with L Company and said, look, I'm going up a bit further. For God's sake, don't shoot me, you know, because in the dark. Um, they said, yeah, all right, but I don't think they really took much notice because they were a bit busy. Um, so I carried on, got right to the top, looked around this rock, and instead of there being a single sniper, there was a whole row of them all lined out behind this, like, tabletop rock. And what they were doing was taking turns at shooting. So to our lads, it must have looked like this bloke was a switched-on sniper, and every time he fired one round, he moved, because that was all they were doing. And what they were waiting for was our lot to break cover and they were going to mow them down with a gun that was on the end. So I saw, all, I saw all this and I turned around to say to Shep, you know, we'll, 
and he wasn't there. So now I'm all by myself, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, <laughs> you know, like you do. And, um, and I could see about 13 bodies. Now, apparently, the rest of them were around the corner, but I couldn't see them. So I thought, well, you're up here now. You can't, there's nowhere to go. You can't go back down because you'll, you'll mix it with L Company. You can't go across because you don't know what's up there. So your only way out is to hit them. So by this time, Shark is, you know, what are you doing about it? And, and I said, well, this is what I've got, and this is what I'm going to do. And he said, OK. So I then just took out the two grenades that I had left, uh, changed mags, got a fresh mag ready. I put the FOSS. The FOSS grenade went first, and it went at the people. And then the HE grenade went to the gun. Uh, and when I just peered around the corner, the FOSS had worked a fair bit, and the, the gun had been decimated. And the two blokes who were back, they'd gone. And then as soon as they'd gone off, I just walked around the corner and fired at anything that moved. It got three rounds. Um, then Sharky came up and said, they're, they're giving up, they're giving up, but we're going to put 266s in to make sure. And because it might have been another one of these smally traps, like. So I'm, you know, I'm in here now. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. Like, so I said, wait out, and I'll, I'll get out. And as I ran out and dived in this little hole, I just said, let it go. And 266 is whistled in. Uh, and he said, you know, it's clear, it's clear. Can you go back to where you were and make sure that they don't get out the back? Because the ones that I couldn't see were still alive, you see. And um, as I went back round this corner, one of these blokes that I'd hit, I'd only, I'd hit him about here, and he'd spun and gone down, but he wasn't dead. And as I walked round the corner, he just squeezed a burst from an FN and took me in both legs. He then died rather suddenly because I was a bit upset then. Um, I got out, sat down, dropped my weapon, looked down at both legs, and in the dark, you can't tell which is the worst one. So I pulled out the one first field dressing that I had left. And then you're trying to make a command decision now. Which one do I bandage now? Because I couldn't tell in the dark. They both were hurt. <laughs> and uh, I ditched the first field dressing in temper because I didn't know, what, you know which one to do it on. And, um, and I thought, right, you've got to I'll sit here and wait for Sharky. So I got on the radio again and said, Sharks, I'm in. Can you get to me? And he said, yeah, sure, I'll be there in a minute. I'm just taking some prisoners. 4-2 Commando's attack was a complete success. Corporal Newland won the military medal, and scores of prisoners were brought down to be disarmed and processed. The war for them and everyone else, it was hoped, was now over.